SpaceX now the apparent shoot down by Iran of a civilian jetliner. The Iranian regime is still denying that one of its ground to air missiles caused the crash of Ukraine Airlines Flight 752. Joining me now, the founder of the American Truth Project and Daily Ledger contributor, Barry Nussbaum. Barry, minutes, this was a, a, a red flag to me. It was minutes after that plane went down. Iran National News went on and said that it was a mechanical problem. How can you make that assessment uh, that quick? And now they're saying, well, no, it can't have been shot down because the debris field is not large. This is all nonsense. If the video we've seen of that aircraft going down is accurate, it almost went in vertical. The debris field is going to be very, very small pieces. Graham, I spoke to a former CIA operations officer who had been stationed uh, in a portfolio including uh, Iran for a number of years. She is of the opinion that worldwide intelligence is unanimous. It was a missile strike. Now, let's make one thing perfectly clear that it was not a mistake. I looked all this up this morning, so here are the facts. A plane on takeoff is traveling just under 200 miles per hour, going up very slowly, and it's a huge target. Right. An incoming missile comes in at approximately, get this, 11,000 miles per hour, very tiny, coming in straight down. On the radar, they don't look anything alike. In fact, they are ridiculously different. There is no mistake. Somebody made a decision to pull the trigger on that missile, and all the intelligence agencies around the world are saying the same thing. A missile from the ground went up and struck the plane. The question is, was it a mistake or was it on purpose to send a message? Well, I think you just proved pretty much by your research that it was not a mistake. How can, how can you mistake that? First of all, like you pointed out, the speed, but also the trajectory, right? You have an aircraft going up away from terra firma. If you had an attack, this would be a projectile going down toward terra firma. Look, Iran, you know this better than anybody. Iran can't be trusted, period, end of story. I hope Boeing helps get to the bottom of it, but we don't know. Meantime, the President of the United States as this information was coming out, he was still giving earlier this week Iran an avenue to negotiate, which is fascinating to me uh, on a lot of levels. But I want to play the soundbite. Roll tape. We must all work together toward making a deal with Iran that makes the world a safer and more peaceful place. We must also make a deal that allows Iran to thrive and prosper and take advantage of its enormous untapped potential. Now, obviously, he's not talking about a, a, a JCPOA part two uh, in any shape or, or form here. But the big question, really, um, and especially if you ask somebody like Benjamin Netanyahu, can you negotiate in good faith with t the terrorist regime? Absolutely. Unconditionally, no in capital letters. Iran has proven that. Obama's foreign policy was not carrot and the stick. It was, here's carrots, billions and billions of carrots, and promise me what I want to hear and I'll give you more. Well, that didn't work. The JCPOA guaranteed they would have a nuclear weapon if they didn't cheat, and they cheated, meaning what Netanyahu released at the UN several years ago and gave to now President Trump was the intelligence that proves they never stopped their nuclear enrichment program. You'd have to be retarded at this point to believe anything they say. I think Trump is talking directly to the Iranian people saying, stop supporting terror, meaning stop supporting this government of crazy terrorists, and we, the United States and the rest of the Western world will treat you normally. We'll open up trade, we'll release the sanctions, we'll talk together. And you know what? The Iranian people hate their government, they're terrorized, and if they go out in the streets, they'll probably be shot for protesting. So Trump has a big carrot and a bigger stick. And intelligence says the economy in Iran is extremely close to collapse. And now that they've shot down a jetliner, 
worldwide aviation may follow the lead of the FAA. Already the FAA has banned any flights to or from the United States from crossing Iranian airspace. After the Canadians died, I wouldn't be surprised if the rest of the world follows suit. Right. That will have huge financial considerations on Iran. This is long overdue, and it's about time the Democrat Party and the mainstream media cabal admit that their guy screwed up. The 44th president screwed up, and the 45th is trying to clean up this mess. Very thank you.